Welcome everybody, we're back now, following on from the video there, which I, uh, yeah, uh, I showed you how to do the lining paper on this wall using the Albany um, reinforced lining paper, which is great because since I've seen you last, it's a good couple of weeks because we had um, to order this paper and Farron Ball's paper is made to order. So the paper's now here, I've come back and now we're getting on with this feature wall. Now you've seen at the beginning which um, which paper it is, it's the Peony, Peony, I think you pronounce it, Peony. It's the Peony paper from Farrow and Ball and I've ordered three rolls. Now three rolls should be ample on here because I always think, depending on your size of your height of your room, you can easily get three um, drops, three full drops to a roll and that's normally how you normally measure up. You get your standard width of wallpaper and count one, two, three, that's one roll, that's how you do it. But I always say to everybody, make sure that you read the instructions because Farron Ball, like other papers, have some instructions that you need to read. So I've read the instructions because I already knew what I was expecting. Farron Ball print their paper to order and as it comes off the machine, they cut the lengths accordingly. So to try and explain that in simple terms, this is roll number one, i.e. this is labeled up. You can see it, serial number 18. I've got serial number 19 and I've also got serial number 20. Now what it says in the instructions is you should hang corresponding rolls lengths next to each other, if that makes sense. So if I start here, you start with your first roll as it comes off the roll, one, two, three, and so on, all the way across. But because this is a feature wall, I'm gonna be starting in the middle. Now you know how I find the middle, I've got my laser, got that there. I measured up before when I did the lining paper, so I knew that I needed 1,885 from the side to the middle and I've checked that from the side to the middle and I've checked it again from the middle to the side. So I know that's in the middle and I've got the laser liner on there, I'll just turn it on. You might be able to see it, can you see it crisscrossing there? That's how good the laser up liner is. I don't need the horizontal, so I've turned it off, turn that off and I go back to the vertical and I'll line the vertical up with, with the middle. You can just probably see it. Uh, I've got my goggle. You can just probably see it there. Yes. These are brilliant. You can just see it there. So that is the middle. And I plan to hang from the middle. Can you see? From there, either side of that. Right. We're going to crack on with this. What I want to be doing is cutting my lengths accordingly and marking each length. So I'm going to start with serial number 18. I'm going to cut the first length, which would be that one there, which will actually be a trimmed off length. The next one, the next one, and the next one. So out of that, I'm going to expect to get three drops. I'm going to go one, two, three. That will be one roll. Then I'll start with another roll. One, two, three. I'm going to have them all ready and I'm going to number them in order because I know that the, the first length I'm going to hang should be drop number four. And the opposite side to that will be drop number five. And then I can work back number three, number two, and then back to number one. But at least I will know that from left to right, I will have started with, let's call it roll number 18, roll number 19, and roll number 20 to finish off. Because I am doing a match in the middle, it will, it will balance evenly with the cuts of paper. If I've got, I've got a ruler in my pocket there. Let's just do this in inches. If I've got a length there, that will be 10 inches to put in. The opposite side, Uh, 
as good as 10 inches. So we will be balanced either side. Don't forget, you're gonna get this paper because it is a paste the paper. You are going to get some stretch, you're gonna get some movement. I've got tub paste, I'm using Wix's tub paste. I'm not thinning it, it's straight as it comes out the tub, out the tin. If you use the farro and ball powder flake mix, make sure you mix it up not too thin because the thinner your paste, the more chance it's gonna over soak. Now the soaking time, once you've pasted this, is 10 minutes. So what I, will, what I will be doing is, once I've pasted a length, I will mark the time that that is ready to hang. So if it's, I don't know, if it's quarter to 10, for me finishing my first pasting, I will then say in 10 minutes time, or even nine minutes time, I'm ready to hang, because by the time you get it on, you'll have had that 10 minute soak. Depending on your papers you use, it might be a six minute soak, might be a 10 minute soak, might be longer, but this does say 10 minute soak. So that's how you do it. Paste it and then give it the 10 minute soak. All right, just move around to this side. Measuring top to bottom. This measures up two meters, 520. This is this part here. In the middle, it's two meters, 500. That down that side is two meters, 510. So I'm gonna take the longest, the biggest size, which is your two meters, 520, and I'm gonna add 100 mil, which is four inches. That allows two inches at the top, 50 mil, and two inches at the bottom, 50 mil. And that should hopefully be enough for any run out of that ceiling being a little bit umpidori. So that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be measuring off the rolls, two meters, 620. I'll get my first one off, and then I'm going to start lining it all up so my corresponding papers all match with that half drop. And I'll go in the other room because that's where the paste table is and I'll show you and explain how that all works. Right, this is as live as it comes when you're trying to explain how to do this papering now. I've just opened the first roll, which was, let's call it roll number, um, roll number one, which is serial number 18. Now I've just got it out on the board to see what the pattern's like. And um, never take it for granted that as the paper comes off the roll, that's how you hang it. Because this, that's the pattern. Can you see it? Peonies, peonies. And this paper is actually reverse rolled. So what I've got to do is reverse it round. So the top of the roll, whoops, the top of the roll is the top of the paper. And at the moment, the top of the roll is the bottom of the paper because the paper is upside down. So that's what we've got to do. And that's quite simple. All you'll do is, if you can just see what I'm gonna do, I'm going to reverse the roll. So it's literally a case of rolling it back on itself the other way around. Like that, and I'm gonna do that to each roll, but I will do it, see me in the mirror. I'm gonna do it to each roll as it comes. Now, another consideration when you're doing this um, fire and ball paper, they are handmade. It does say, make sure you've got um, a lined surface, which good, because we've got a lined surface, we've not got a porous surface. It says hang it with a hanging brush, don't use a spatula because you could polish up the surface because it's a, in effect like a hand printed. And what's nice about fire and ball papers is they actually print onto their paper with their paint colors. So if you did want to do a direct color match, the color matches on these papers are farron ball colors, yeah. So let's crack on with this one. What I'm gonna do, reverse it round, and then I'm gonna start cutting the length off and then match it to a second length because don't forget it's half drop. I've just had a look, it's roughly about 62 centimeters. So if the 62 centimeters of this pattern repeats, the half drop of that is what? What's half of 62? Yeah, you know where I am, 31. So that's what I'm gonna do. Right, now we've got to think about pattern placement. Now this is quite a busy pattern and you're not going to be looking too much at the pattern repeats. So you've got to think about where the top of the paper is going to be against your ceiling edge. Now, these are nice, these are nice, but let's face it, we could be ending up cutting some of that off if we leave that as a main flower. So what I would say is, have a look at your paper 
and think, where will the top be? Where's the visual line that you can see a pattern going across that top edge of the ceiling? And this is what you've got to work out. This is what you need to spend your time at. Now, there's plenty of paper on this paper that I can say I'd probably like to see that underneath the ceiling, somewhere there. So what we would do is, if we can do this one-handed, half of that flower there would be chopped off, but you will see a full one. Now don't get panicking because this is half drop. This isn't going to repeat all the way through. You will see some of that at the top, but you won't see, you will see some of that at the top on another one, but it's on an angle because the pattern repeat goes across a lot. You see, it's half drop. So this is what you've got to weigh up. Either offer it up to the wall or do it on the board. But I'm thinking because we've got to go in a sequence of one, two, three, four lengths that come off these rolls. And this is roll number 18 of 19 and 20. You've got to think you can't be swapping and changing rolls from roll 20 into roll 18. You follow me, don't you? You've got to keep with that roll. So we're going to start with this 18. We're going to cut this accordingly. And I'm going to think, let's chop some of that off. We're going to have a good two inches above that. And let's see where we are. So we could probably say, if we're keeping this into the main How about we do it like that? If we were looking at being a cut on the ceiling there, let's go halfway between that and that's where we'll start. So it doesn't matter too much. Let's just fold that over. So you can see I've just made a mark there. I've had to put the camera down and redo it so I could see it. So we've got the fold there. That's what I'm going to trim to. If you look at that, if you take off two inches, because that would be the waste. If you think there's going to be a good two inches coming off the top of the paper there that means the ceiling will be about there but we'll have a nice pattern of that peony peony just there so i'm happy with that Right, so you've just seen me cut off 2620 on that. Now we need to get the half drop on this paper. So as I've said, it's not straight through. You've got to line it up and bring it across and see where your pattern match. And the pattern match will be there. Just there. Can you see that? Hopefully. See that pack match is just there so you need to trim off that top piece so I'm going to line that up make sure I'm happy with that I'm just going to get my finger just there where I know where it is and I'm going to fold to that top check it Yeah, we're good on that. If you fold it sharp, then you can actually hold it and cut to that line with your shears. And while I've got it on the board, this is going to be length number two. Marked it. So do you get the idea? I've got a spotlight in the corner. Do you get the idea? I've got to do this all the way through each roll now because I need to know that I've got the full amount of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lengths all geared up because I want to start with lengths number four and number five. And at the minute, number four and number five will be coming off the second roll, which will be roll number 19. So I hope that explains it. Let me crack on and then we can get some paper on. Question. Does Farron Ball swap their 
base papers to a non-woven. So look at that. You see that? You see that? There's fibres in it. That's a non-woven paper, but it's not paste the wall and there is a soak time. So why is that? When a non-woven with fibres in it like that, like a reinforced paper, you can see that, it still paste the paper, but it's good that they've gone to this sort of paper because it is nice to hang. Right, I've spent a bit of time now. Those three rolls are all cut up. Bear in mind, I've had to go in sequence, so I know which is my first length to my last length. Now, I've shown you on the wall, I'm hanging from the middle, so we've got a balanced side i.e. we've got strips of paper either side of the wall that will just be roughly about the same sort of width. So we're hanging from the middle and I've worked out that I need um, strips, lengths, four and five to meet in the middle. So I'm going to go with roll stroke length number five. You can see what I've done, I've marked it. Can you just see it? I've marked it there and all my other papers, I don't know you can see it, are underneath the paste table on the trestle and they're all numbered up as well. So once I've done number five, I'm going to drop to number four, then number three, then number two. I might do number one, but I might go over to number six and bring it across that way. Now it does say 10 minutes soak. I can't understand that because it does seem a non-woven paper. You've probably seen a bit of an intro at the beginning, but I am using the Wix tub paste. It'll go on nicely and I'm going to show you how to paste. If there's one thing that you come away from this video from today, I'm going to show you how to professionally paste paper. Now I'm using a brush, I've got a four inch. If you want to be using a roller, you can do, that's up to you. But with these delicate papers that are 150 odd quid a roll, I like to feel the paste going on with a brush and I can move that paste around as a, as a require. But literally, I'm going to show you how the correct way to paste paper is and don't listen to anybody else. Right. Imagine that there's more than one roll on this board, i.e. lengths. It doesn't really matter because the same principle applies. You can see that the, the width of this board is actually wider than the paper. Now, when I come to paste, I'm going to br bring it into the middle and I'm literally going to push the paste. I'm going to, I'm literally going to push gently the paper to overlap that top edge by a quarter of an inch, five, 10 mil. That's all you need. Now, this is why I don't like pasteboards that have got those metal edges going around the side because you can't move the paper up and down without damaging it. Well, see what I can do. I'm not damaging any paper, but what you're going to do is you're going to just overlap the top by a fraction, just get your fingers, overlap it, and when you come to paste, I've got a dry brush, you start in the middle and you work your way out. Now once you've done this section of paper, you grab it there, you bring it down, and then you do the same at the bottom, you bring it out. Now if you've got multiple lengths on the board, clearly what you'd do, you'd have them all lined up, now your top one goes up to the top, but your ones underneath that one that you're pasting come away from the top, so you bring those towards you. Doing it this way, you will not get any paste on the underlying papers that means that could be over soaking. And I'll tell you, if you, this is the only thing you listen to today, you've learned something. But this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna start, we're in the middle there, I'm just gonna push it up over the top by a quarter of an inch and I'm going to start pasting from that middle. So here we go. Just get a bit of paste on your brush. Don't overload it. I'm going to start in the middle there, put all that paste as a reservoir and then start drawing it. I'm doing it slow because I'm trying to teach you. You're drawing it out over the edge, crisscross motion. And that means you will catch all that top edge. I'm going to speed up a bit. All that top edge and not miss any. I know a lot of people paste onto the board. It's a bad practice to do, very bad. All the way down. I can feel that that's a nice coating of paste on there. Not too thick, not too thin. 
And remember, we've got about a 10 minute soak time. So that's that top section, half of paper. I'll just make sure it's spread out nicely, no misses. And now I'm just gonna grab it, pull it, grab it, not literally, but grab it, pull it down. So I've got a bit of an overlap just here, and I'm gonna do the same again. Keep away from the top. You don't need to paste all the way to the edge because that's what you will be touching when you hang your paper. And I'm coming along. All the way down. If you've got one of those pasting machines, brilliant. I've not got one. I am the pasting machine, but I do know how much paste I'm actually applying and I can alter it accordingly. Moving about a bit for you. Don't matter it's exercise because I don't go to the gym. Right, we've done that now. Put my brush on there. Grab it at the top where there's no paste. You literally hold it. You bring it all the way down. Let it naturally hang. Line up your edges with each other and drop it down. Just carefully line them up so no edges go dry. And that bit there, don't fold it, just leave it as a bit of a, can you see it? Ballooned over. And bring it there, bring all that there, and I'm doing the bottom. I'm doing exactly the same. Overlapping, a fraction, and then pasting. Now this is a paper that you've got to be careful, you don't get any paste on the surface. If you do, it's just a warm, damp cloth or a sponge just to get it off before it soaks in because when it dries you'll you'll have it um, we'll call it like a flash it will flash over the surface you'll see the paste on the paper right coming to the bottom I'm not going all the way to the bottom I'm just keeping away because again that's where we will be folding when we do the bottom cut anyway I have got a bucket of hot water that's cooling in the other room ready for me. And coming down, that's nicely on. Don't draw back on yourself or else all you'll do is just put paste on the face. So I'm pulling it away, that's it. Right, you asked me what brush I'm using. I'm using one of those lovely Monarch Advanced four inches. That applies the paste very nice. Up and over and down. Right, now fold it over. People call this booking. Fold it over and then again. And what I'm gonna do, it's just nicely folded like that. I'm gonna take it in the other room. I'm going to have a look. I want 10 minutes from now. I've got a spare piece of paper and I'm gonna write down what I need to be hanging this. So currently we are 11.26. If I hang that in 10 minutes time, yeah, somewhere around about 11.30. Yeah, can we be a bit more precise on that? I'd say around about 11.34, start getting it hanging because don't forget you can allow for the time that you've been pasting. So yeah, around about 25 to 12, I will be getting this length on. So see you in a minute or 10. Right, I'm ready to start hanging. Now it's probably been eight minutes, so I'm allowing for time for talking to you and obviously hanging it and dropping it. In the meantime, in the, I mean, mean, mean <laughs> while I've been waiting, what I've done, I've actually pasted number four. So by the time that I've hung this, explained it to you, that will be ready to hang and we can get the next one on. So without further ado, we won't, don't want it over soaking. Let's get it on. now. It says, wait till it's pliable. This is pliable, it feels soft now. I'm gonna hang with a hanging brush. I'm only gonna be using one of these to get it into the top corners and the bottom. I have got a cutting blade, which I'll use, and I've got a sharp alpha snap-off blade. My bucket of warm water's down here. So you might see me go off camera, you might see me not, we'll see how we go. Right. You're going to unfold it. The longest fold is the part that's at the top. Now, we know we want to keep that 
the peony, peony, about two inches away from the ceiling because we have allowed a good two inches at the top. So as long as I know that there's two inches at the top, we're about bang on. I've got my line I can work to, so let's get it dropped. I mean, on. Number five is going here. So I'm gently letting it drop to the floor. I'm going to move it up. You can see me lined. I'll just get my ruler to check. I won't be doing this if it wasn't for the sake of a video. I could probably come down a little bit. And I'm probably about there. Let's get it lined up. Once you know you've got your two inches, you're good to go. Yeah, happy with that. There's two inches at the top. Now I'm just going to bring this across, match up onto the line there. Hanging brush, start from the middle and work your way out. Now when we come to the next length, don't worry too much about pattern matching, match it at eye level. Just going to get that in at the top. I'm just going to pull it away off the ceiling just so it's not sticking too long. That's why you have your warm water. Happy with that. I'm coming down now. Get any air bubbles out. I'll get it down at the bottom then we'll trim the top. We're still nicely on that laser line or if you use a plumb bob. Oh, brilliant, we've not cut it short. Coming down from the middle out as not to get any creases. I'm down here and I am spot on with that laser level. Just kind of cut this bottom now. Get it all the way in. Keep your blade in place, moving your spatula that you cut with. Now, let me just show you something. I'll wipe it in a minute. Now the bottom will probably have a little bit more than two inches cutting off because I knew by the time I'd started cutting lengths that I could allow a little bit extra. I wasn't gonna be needing to cut so tight. So there's probably a little bit more there. And the other thing I want to mention is get out the habit of using one of these for cutting because the thickness of that is thicker than the thickness of that. And when you come to doing neat cuts on these sorts of papers, sharper the cut the better. These seem to leave a little bit of an overlap because you're not cutting it tight enough. You've been told. Now, if you remember in the last video, On this, I told you that all the edges were gone. I've gone around with cork, so it makes it nice for the blade to actually cut into the angle.
wipe the paper edge, rotate your sponge rounds, and then just wipe the ceiling of any paste that might have gone on it gently. I'm happy with that. I know the paste won't come off on my sponge because I use the isomat sealing paint. Now cheap contract matte paints will have paint coming off on your sponge three minutes before the next one goes on. So I'll go and fetch it and we'll start that one as well. I've just gone to fetch it, still got a couple of minutes. I'll get it on in a, I'll get it on in a second. But what I want to say, Farron Ball, with it being a hand printed paper, you might see imperfections in it. So don't worry, it is a naturally printed. I've seen it being done. I've been down to Farron Ball um, HQ to see how they actually manufacture this. It's very interesting block print and roller printing and things like that. So if there is elements that there might be slightly a mismatch on things, don't worry about it. This is, I'll say this is what you're paying for. This is what customers like, a proper hand printed wallpaper. Now I'm still going to say to you is you might find that it doesn't always match up but if you can match up the best you can at eye level round about there you can't do any more than that. If it runs out at the top, if it runs out down at the bottom don't worry just match it at eye level you can't do, do any more than that but it's a characteristic of the paper. That's what I say to the customer anyway. So this is length number four going on and we're going to butt joint it and well hopefully get it matching up. I have got my boxwood seam roller there so I'll be using that when I need to. Don't over roll it though. Coming in for a match. I think my battery died on that. Anyway, I've got it cut at the top and I'm just trimming the bottom there. Um, as I said, and I'll show you in a minute, well, on the next length, I've actually got it lined up nicely at eye level. So yeah, sorry about that. We got a bit cut out, didn't we? But all in all, we're cutting nicely at the bottom. I've trimmed a bit off so we haven't got too much waste, but I'm just um, trimming it down now. Just bring in on this. So as I say, trimmed off at the bottom and here we are at eye level. You see the pattern there. I'm just working on these joints here. I'm just seeing it that I can just push it down with a seam roller, making sure it's nice. If you've over soaked it, they'll pull and stretch back when it dries, but nature of the paper, don't worry about it. Just make sure you gently wipe any joints down in case there's any paste that's oozed out. But I will say at the moment, you'll see the joints because it's a wet edge from where the sponge has been. But other than that, it's not bad at all. I'm quite happy with that way down. Make sure there's no air bubbles. And uh, what I'll do, I'll go and get, I think I'll do three and two next. So if you want to bear with me, see you in a bit. Don't want to bore you with these, I've just, <laughs> Pasted number three, and I'll get that on in a minute, but I'm gonna paste number six, and um, I'll probably move the camera around there and show you dropping number six. So I won't show you number three, I'll show you number six. So uh, bear with us. Right, I've been good to you on this. I've not bored you too much with it, have I? Hopefully not. Right, I did those ones down there. I've took it into the corner, you can see that, and the, the strip down in that angle, it left me approximately about 10 inches. So 10 inches, and I allowed an inch for trimming off. So I cut a piece down, and I'll show you that on the next length there, how to do cutting lengths down. But I'm back, I've done number six, because that was a straightforward one, and now I'm coming on to length number seven. That's been pasted, it's ready to go, so don't hold me up because I need to get this on now because I've got a socket to go around. So I'll show you how to do the socket, but there is 
videos there about sockets. So let's get this on and we've only got these two drops now. Been about an hour and a half. Trim nicely at the top, just making sure that we we're matching at eye level. So um, bear with me. I hope you can see how I've gone around that and tucked it in at the back. Just carefully with the damp sponge. Wipe off any paste that's on the face. Wipe it round. Make sure it's all in. And then you can just nip up the screws. Right, so. So that was quite a straightforward one to do. Didn't show you too much of that. I ran the socket right. That was the, the trick of it. If you if in doubt, turn the power off. Now, what I've done, I've now measured the distance between there and there, and that's what I need to be cutting off. Now, measure at the top, middle, and bottom to get three points of entry. And each one is roughly about the 10 inches, very much similar to the other side, so that's good. It means we've not had too much stretch on the paper as we've come across. So I'm going to say it's as good as 10 inches, so I'm going to be trimming a piece down, a full width, down to 11 inches. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me blend out and blend back in in the other room. Let's move you around. Now I'm trimming down a length, so I've pasted it and I need 11 inches. So what I've done, I'm making sure that the top of the paper's here, because I know that, you see, I'm making sure the top of the paper's here because I'm needing a good left hand edge and that is a good left hand edge. Left, I can't even say it, good left hand edge. So what I'm going to be doing now is just lining it up with the side of the board. Just making sure it's all down. Now, I've got my pencil. I've got my ruler and I'm going to show you, right, I need 11 inches, which is there. So I get my fingers geared up for being at 11 inches and hold that against the pasteboard. I can go actually a little bit more than 11 inches. So I'm going to come down. Uh, you can see this. I'm putting the pencil against the edge and I'm carefully drawing it down all the way. And that gives me a distance of 11 inches. Spot on. Spot on. Now I cut to that line and then I know just go straight up, don't even have to be on the line, you can just be a bit over it. I know that I'll be now trimming off only about an inch on the return of the wall that I don't want. There you go, and this is the piece that I want, that piece I don't want. Right, I'm going to get that on and I'll see you once it's on. It's dead easy, just hang it the same and just trim the sides and the top. So, catch you in a bit. There you 
think that was a bit of a speeded up version of me actually putting that length on. But um, yeah, it's gone on nice. I think what I'll do now, let's get cleared up, get the bed back in place and we'll stand back and admire this masterpiece of a feature wall. The peony. Peony. There we have it everybody, it's done. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think, even though reading that instruction, this is half drop paper. I don't think it is, I think there might be an error. I will be contacting Farrow and Borders to check. Well, I might do, might not. But it does on there, if anybody who knows about, that emblem means half drop, and it says, pattern repeat, 62.8, centimeters which I showed you on the board so it repeats on one side at that and then half of that is the other so every other one should be pattern matching and matching through I'll be honest it's not you can see you can see if I do my finger there we go up on a half drop angle uh, like that can you see the pattern matches lovely going across all the way down look. So if I go across, that is matching right. The pattern's all matching right. If I get my spirit level on it, i.e. the laser or plumb bob, I've got plumb joints. But you would expect every other length to match the length before. So if you go one, two, three, one and three should be the same lengths. The two would be the same as four. I'm questioning it, I'm questioning it. We've got it right though, it's visually looks spot on. If the, I don't know whether you can see, the hawk-eyed viewers will see how badly that ceiling runs out. And that's why we drop down with one of the peonies, peonies, enough that I knew what I was doing to cut two inches off at the top. But thankfully, I say with my skills, we've got that right, I will say, it's not an easy paper to hang, mainly because of that question that you have on yourself, is this a half drop? Don't get me wrong, every length matches. Each length I've come to, I've got the match, but I am questioning, and the question will be, have you hung this? Is it half drop or is it, ooh, what do we call it? Every other one a half drop, I'm not sure. But all in all, really nice. It's expensive paper, this is about 150 quid a roll. But visually, this is stunning. It's a lovely paper tank. And if Farron Ball, I've actually changed to a non-woven, fi fibrous paper that they're actually now printing on, um, it's a good thing. It does still expand and stretch. You can feel it going very pliable and malleable, but it is nice to cut. You've got none of that snarling up that you used to have with the traditional papers. So all in all, yeah, thanks for listening to me. Thanks for watching. Hope I've explained everything and watch the videos at the end.